Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a German-Swiss science fiction and thriller movie, called Tides, or also known as The Colony. After a global catastrophe nearly wipes out humanity on Earth, Earth's elites flee to settle on Kepler-209 space colony. Over time, the Kepler-209 residents have modern technology and space travel, but they have become infertile due to the heavy radiation there. Because of that, the Ulysses project was started to test whether Earth is suitable for human habitation and reproduction, but the first mission was lost shortly after landing. Later, they send the Ulysses too, where a young astronaut named Blake from the Kepler-209 is assigned to return to Earth with fellow astronauts, Tucker and Holden. Unfortunately, their space capsule lands roughly on a tidal flat near a weather beacon that broadcasts telemetry data back to Kepler-209. Blake discovers Holden was killed and then finds Tucker inside the space capsule, but his leg is injured. Therefore, Blake is forced to go alone to gather any information on Earth. She then tests the water with a biometer and finds some signs of life. She also finds a jellyfish-like animal that suddenly stings her wrist before she can take a sample for testing. Luckily, she manages to squirt some medical spray on her wrist and then puts the sample in her red bag. After that, Tucker tells her that the weather is getting worse because a storm is coming. Blake eventually loses her visibility, so Tucker climbs out of the shuttle and shoots up a flare. As Blake walks back to the shuttle, two mysterious men suddenly approach the shuttle and attack Tucker. After running through the fog, Blake finds that Tucker and their space capsule have been dragged somewhere. She then uses the scope on her gun and sees a group of people from a distance dragging their space capsule. Soon, she ends up passing out after being assaulted from behind by another group of people. Afterwards, Blake and Tucker are thrown into a large pit that gradually filled with water. Seeing Tucker's injuries getting worse, Blake attempts to climb out to ask for medical supplies, but she eventually falls. She tells Tucker that she sees a child, before a rope is suddenly thrown down by the mysterious people. After climbing out, she sees a band of fertile humans with bows and arrows, nicknamed the Muds. In an unknown language, they tell Blake to help a man whose face was injured after being shot by Tucker. Meanwhile, a woman from the Muds can speak English and takes Blake to her shuttle where the medical supplies are. She also learns that they have removed the technology from the shuttle. After that, she heals the injured man using the same spray she had used earlier. At the same time, she manages to hide some medical supplies and brings them back to help Tucker. While trying to help the dying Tucker, Blake tells him that she saw a large community outside and lots of babies. He says that they have to inform Kepler-209 residents, but their shuttle was broken. As a result, Blake devises a plan to find the Ulysses one and later uses the biometer to call for help. However, Tucker chooses to commit suicide by consuming a poison pill stored in his army tag necklace. In a flashback, young Blake was talking with her father who was also an astronaut. He gave her a matchbox with three famous astronauts on the front, while he also had the same matchbox. He told her to light one at a certain time and he would do the same, saying that before the last one's gone, they would be together again. He also taught her whatever they did was for the many, a phrase that Blake repeats as the flashback fades and that she now only has one match left. Not long after, the tides finally come in and start to fill the pit. Hence, she is lifted out of the pit and tied up on a boat with her hands behind her back. The boat starts sailing at night, while Blake sees an ocean funeral for Tucker. In another flashback, Blake's father told her that the people had plundered Earth's resources. He also showed her a tree seedling which would not grow on their space colony. The flashback ends with her father leaving Kepler-209 on the Ulysses 1 mission as everyone behind repeated the phrase for the many. As the water begins to recede the next morning, Blake is thrown back to the pit, where she befriends with a girl named Mila. The two attempt to understand each other's language, and Blake asks her help getting the biometer. Shortly after, a man lowers some girls and a baby into the pit, while there is a commotion outside. Blake then climbs up only to see that the muds are invaded by a group of hostile that kidnaps all of them. She also sees Mila screaming and holding Blake's red bag before being thrown into a boat by a man. After the situation calms down, the woman who can speak English rescues them. It is revealed that she is Mila's mother and her name is Narvik. She then takes a flare gun and runs off to save her daughter. At the same time, Blake follows her because she wants to help her to save Mila, even though Narvik is still cynical about her. After hearing Mila's screams from afar, the two learn that the captives are taken to a boat. Blake tells Narvik to shoot the flare gun into the sky, but she does not listen. Because of this, Blake knocks her out and then shoots the flare. When the hostels are diverted, she quickly swims onto the boat and finally finds her red bag. As the men return to their boat, 
Blake hides inside with Malia and the other captives. Soon after, all of them are unloaded from the boat and heads for a cargo ship that rises above the frequent floods and storms. On the cargo ship, they meet a man named Paling who orders Myla to be taken away and several men are sent to work. After finding her gun from the red bag, he takes Blake to meet his boss, Gibson, who turns out to be a survivor from Ulysses' one mission led by Blake's father. He then informs her of his group's first encounter with the Muds, saying that her father was very good with them, but one time, they suddenly rebelled and destroyed the Ulysses One capsule along with its communication equipment, assassinating Blake's father at the end. After that, the two talk about bringing the people from Kepler-209 to the Earth, even Blake's father had a plan to build a giant dam and use the ocean as electricity. The next day, Blake realizes that she is fertile, so she can reproduce here. She then walks into a class full of the children of the Muds, whom Gibson is educating. While Blake and Gibson tell the children about Kepler, Myla is also brought into the class. After that, Blake meets Gibson's adopted son, Neil, who gets private lessons. He eventually reveals her a secret which is a small tree growing in a jar. Out of curiosity, she inquires who told him about the tree, and he replies that there is a man living in a cabin next to the engine room. After taking a map, Blake quickly makes her way to the cabin where she learns that her father has been locked away all this time and that Gibson has lied to her. At the same time, Gibson suddenly comes and says that her father actually led the rebellion because he sided with the Muds and fell in love with a Mud woman. Blake and her father are finally reunited after 15 years. He says that Kepler residents should never return to Earth, and he has to stop the mistakes. When the tide is high, Blake sees the weather station where they can connect the biometer and contact Kepler. She also tells Gibson that she is fertile, so it can be evidence to send to Kepler. Over dinner, Neil's mother, Moon Eye, informs Blake how Gibson saved them and adopted them into his family. A few moments later, the power suddenly goes off, and Paling informs Gibson that an intruder took out the guards and killed the power. Therefore, Gibson orders everyone to hide in their room and goes off with a gun. While walking through the corridors, the intruder holds a knife to Blake's throat. Unexpectedly, the intruder turns out to be Narvik who is looking for her daughter. Afterwards, both of them go together to see Myla, but they are suddenly attacked by the guards. Paling also comes into the room and orders the guards to take Narvik away, but before that, she whispers to Blake that they only take the girls. Later, Munai treats Blake's wound and implies that she has his eyes, just as Gibson enters the room. He then explains that Narvik was one of the guards who turned against him. As the two continue to talk, Blake finally discovers that the girls are being held captive for Gibson's future breeding plans. Shortly after, Paling brings Blake's red bag to Gibson, but they cannot find the biometer in it. When she returns to her room, Blake finds Myla is hiding inside her closet, but Paling suddenly knocks on her door and forces his way in. Apparently, he wants to harass Blake, but luckily, she ends up killing him with a poison pill from her army tag necklace. Using the opportunity, Blake sneakily attacks the guards and releases all the captives, including Narvik, to whom she gives a gun. She also finds her father, who is watching out the window as Gibson and Neil head for the weather station. They eventually learn that Gibson has the biometer with him, along with Neil as the evidence because he is a Kepler. Meanwhile, the Muds escape to the boat while dodging gunfire from the guards. On the other hand, Blake chases after Gibson and Neil, trying to stop news from Earth being broadcast back to Kepler-209. Gibson tests Neil with the biometer, and surprisingly, Neil is Blake's little brother. However, he immediately threatens Blake by pointing his gun at Neil, and viciously shoots Munai in the head. As he sends the data to Kepler using the biometer, Blake quickly tackles him into the water. She strangles and drowns Gibson, but almost drowning herself. Fortunately, Narvik rescues her and manages to revive her. After that, Blake and her father rejoin the Muds, and all of them set out in a tugboat. Blake then goes to talk to Neil who is grieving his mother's death at the front of the boat. She also gives her matchbox to him, saying that it is a gift from her father. The movie ends with a closing scene showing a habitation on the tide flats and a group of happy children playing together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.